floor, which is just completely destroyed. Some spots that just got bad da water damage. The laminate was very, very, very thin. There's not really any room to sand it and uh, have anything left to work with. The laminate was peeling away in some spots. So just to save it for another season, instead of having to re-laminate the entire floor, we are just using filler, wood glue, varnish and stuff to try to build it back up to the same layer and try to make it look half decent with a little bit of stain and stuff. To be honest, I'm not 100% happy. I'm not even close to 50% happy maybe with it, but it, looks better than it did and it'll be functional that's our mantra here we're not looking for perfection we're looking for functionality this will hopefully last us a couple more seasons and then we can uh, figure out what to do from there coral's sweeping up after dad my dad's making more of a mess trying to fix up the floor a little bit now the bottom side i've already done a bunch to the top side kind of repairing some of the bits and pieces. This piece isn't varnished yet. As you can see, the laminate is all rotten. So I'm just using this tool and it's coming up fairly easy actually. So I'm just gonna remove the first layer of the laminate for this section, cause it's rotten just down the laminate. This wood is, is pretty nice. It's not punky or anything or squishy. But over here, if you can see the rod has gone past the laminate and it's really quite squishy here it's um anyway the wood's completely rotten so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a strip down five millimeters because that's the entire board with the laminate and everything is 20 millimeters then i'm going to use some of the scrap teak that we've been making plugs out of and get it to the right thickness plane it down and just replace it because that'll be a stronger repair for this piece of wood and then the rest of them are pretty much just superficial, just like rot on the laminate that I'll scrape off and fill the gap with some filler. And I've got the wood plugs going here, making lots, and it's taking me forever. Coral's really upset with the mess I'm making, so she's making sure to clean everything up after me. Right, sweetie? So I removed the laminate from this section. The wood's still really good here. But as I said, it's super punky along here, so I'm gonna use the table saw to cut off a section here. I just have to get the height right of the table saw to make sure I only cut about five millimeters. Um, so I've just been cutting different test holes to get my five millimeters, so now I believe I got it just right. Now that I got my grooves cut, just gonna grab a chisel and chisel away some of the wood here. After removing that five millimeter layer of wood, I found some more bad sections. So I'm just gonna remove this one last layer. Um, this isn't too bad, but it's still a little bit destroyed. So I'm gonna remove all that. This really bad section up to here. Just use a saw to cut there and then recut it with the table saw a little bit deeper. Cut off, all the punky wood is gone, and it's just clean wood. Now I gotta cut a nice strip, glue it down, clamp it, and let it dry. brought back six more pieces of our floor from inside our boat and like the other ones it's in a little bit rough shape but in general better than the first few pieces that I had brought back because they were the worst but as you 
saw from the video when we were at the boat, they don't really match anymore. And actually taking a better, closer look at the existing ones, the finish that was on there is pretty much gone. It used to be a semi-gloss or a gloss, and it's pretty much down to almost bare wood. So we're gonna try to finish up these six more pieces of floor so that there's only a few more in the aft of the boat to deal with. Just using little rasps to clean out the little holes and the indents from either rocks, uh, getting pushed down into the laminate from the underside, or just gouges and, and uh, areas that have delaminated from the wood. So I'm removing anything that's delaminating using a uh, blade. I am sanding anything that's not already roughed up with the rasp, or actually sanding after I rasp it and rough it up. Right now I'm also using straight edge or something to pick out the rocks that are really indented because these haven't been done in a long time and the wood's gotten, gotten kind of porous. So all of the little rocks have indented into the wood and they're gonna make it a pain. I don't wanna finish the wood with rocks in there so I'm scraping most of the sand and salt and rocks out and then just picking away the last stubborn ones out of the wood. After that, I'm going to give everything a sand with an orbital sander and we'll see how everything goes. Wow, you're doing a really good job. Thank you, Coral. Keep going. Do a lot of sanding. Hard work? Hard work. Do you like sanding? Is it fun? Yeah. It's fun? I'm glad you like it because there's a lot of sanding on a boat. So this is why I'm doing it on a strap, scrap piece of wood. Uh, it's not as round here, but then I, I adjusted the, the depth of the router and this is a much happier with this one. So we're gonna go with that and right off the side. pretty nice and flush with a nice um, feel to it. It's gonna be way more solid than what was there. I actually kind of wish that more of the wood had actually rotten so I could have did this more where I just removed the laminate because it looks way better and it's a lot more solid but for now I think the filler is going to work fine. So this is the end result. Uh, I might stain it, I might not. Uh, I don't really have stain that matches the teak exactly so Regardless, it's gonna be, you're gonna see it, but at least this is the underside, and now it, it's flush with the laminate here. So it'll sit nicely when it's put down on the floor again. So to do that over here, uh, when it's against the edge here, I found it best to just grab a piece of wood that's the same thickness as the plywood and the laminate, or at least roughly close to it, and use a spatula, or uh, whatever these are called, <laughs> uh, to uh, you know make, make it even all the way across. This one's not wide enough, so in this case I'm just going to use this to draw it, do my final draw all the way across. And we're just using some wood filler. Nothing special. I mean, it's, it's kind of a test. We'll see how this product actually holds up. It is supposed to be water resistant. Um, or what is it? Yeah. Yeah, water and crack resistant. 
So we'll see how it actually holds up, but there will be many, many coats of varnish on top of it. So I'm just gonna smear it in here. Get a light coat everywhere and then level it off. I finished the rest of the sanding as you might be able to see behind me of the six panels that I brought. Papa. You want to try this one? Thanks. Go ahead. Try it out. It's the wrong side, but sure. That Decided works. not to bore you guys too much with it, so it's all done. I, this time I saved myself some trouble and used the orbital sander. I wasn't as afraid of breaking through the laminate after dealing with the first batches that I repaired. So I've been using filler to fill some of these holes and stuff. And once this is stained, it'll be a little less visible or a little less of an eyesore. I'm not too concerned with matching it perfectly, but I'd love to know if anybody has tried using filler and successfully stained it to match the teak. Uh, what did you use to match the teak? I've tried a few different stains that I had available with me here in the shop and they weren't necessarily that successful and I didn't want to go out and buy a bunch of stains just to find out that it didn't work. And I'm also not that concerned with having it match perfectly. It'll just add a little character. But for bigger patches, uh, it's probably not the best thing to use. And I'm realizing here that this is going to be a larger patch because all of this wood is actually delaminating so I'm going to just cut back all of the bad wood here and instead of using this because I'm almost out of this and since I brought the epoxy back from the boat I have epoxy on hand this time so I'm actually going to uh, leave, ideally leave this repair and put a epo epoxy repair right beside it for the larger section here and that way we can see over time how they both do obviously the epoxy is going to outperform this I'm just curious how, how long this patch will hold up. And I've also got other patches throughout the boat. So from now on, I might start trying to fill with epoxy, uh, the 105 with the 205 hardener, some colloida silica, or silica, whatever it's called anyway, uh, some filler to fill it, to thicken it up a little bit. And then I'm going to use some teak sawdust that I've gathered up from making all the teak plugs that I've been working on. So yeah, let's see how this repair does. I have a feeling it's going to match a lot nicer than this, so this might be my go-to from now on, considering it's probably way more, well, it definitely is way more structurally sound than this wood filler. They're a little more experienced with woodworking and using fillers and different things. Uh, please don't judge too much. I'm experimenting with different things and trying to figure it out as I go. I couldn't find any good resources on doing patchwork. A lot of the stuff I found was just kind of replacing stuff that was disc damaged. And honestly, for the amount of wood that is in good shape, I'd rather not just replace the entire floor for a few pieces that have some, some damage. I also might start using this instead of the wood glue I've been using for the par parts that have delaminated where I've been filling in cracks. Cause I'm not certain how, how long the wood glue is going to hold up. Although this is the wood, wood glue I'm using, it's water resistant exterior wood glue. So it should be fine for what we, what I'm, I'm doing, but I'm assuming the epoxy would be a better choice. Delaminated still here, so I'm going to cut back a little bit more. Obviously, all this needs to come up. So, I actually had to remove quite a bit more than I was planning to to find good laminate that wasn't peeling up. Um, and it actually came right up against this patch. So, I'm actually probably just going to sand away or remove a good amount of this so I can do all of this with epoxy and filler. And I have other patches that I did with just this wood filler and we'll see how those patches hold up. But this one's going to be done with epoxy because there's no point in having two fillers right beside each other like that. 
really like these syringes for small measurements. We just measure our 5 to 1 ratio and we can reuse the syringes. This is also really old epoxy, so the epoxy is going to look redder than it usually looks once it's mixed up with the hardener. But that's no big deal, it should still, well, it does still harden, so not the end of the world. Ideally, it would have been more of a mayonnaise consistency. This is more of like a peanut buttery sort of thing, a little thicker than I wanted, but oh well, it'll just be a little thick and hopefully not add too much of this this time. Start with that. This is just for color, really, more than anything. So I don't have a big pink spot. Okay, so this was my first attempt at filling it with epoxy, silica powder, and wood, wood sawdust. Uh, the problem was I was using some of this. Uh, it's just extra from when we were making our teak plugs. And what happened was there's a lot of big chunks, which I guess is good for some stuff, but for something like this where it's so thin, it ended up with a really rough surface. So obviously I'll have to sand that away. So what I did was I strained out some of the really fine stuff and I'll use that as my filler stuff where I want it nice and sandable. And so I'll sand this away and then make another batch and fill all my little holes and stuff. But it's really solid, way more solid than, than my, my little patches that I was doing with the wood filler. So I think that's gonna be my no my next go-to for filling stuff because it also looks better than those patches. So let's see how this goes. Oh, look at that, beautiful. So much smoother than when I had the chunks in it. Oh, it's gonna work so beautifully. So off camera, I ended up finishing off sanding this, getting it smooth and doing one more fill. And now I've got a couple layers of varnish on there. So <laughs> Coral's having a blast over there. Anyway, I, I'm pretty happy the way it turned out actually. I think this looks better than the other patches uh, like this. Well, Coral's having fun. Daddy is hard at work varnishing the floor. Should I keep an eye on her? Our one and a half year old driving. <laughs> yeah, she's got it. I'm almost done. <laughs>